Hi, welcome to another Unity tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to turn your mobile phone into a controller. And to do this, we're going to use Unity's UNET system. To begin, you're going to need some kind of vehicle to drive around. I've just grabbed this Toon car from the Asset Store and I've dragged and dropped it into the scene and I've also added in a plane to drive around on. Neither of these objects have any physics on them so the Toon car doesn't. The plane will come with its usual collider and that's fine. Next you'll need to go to Assets in the main menu Import Package Cross Platform Input. That's where you'll find the mobile thumbstick controller that we'll use in a moment. So bring that into your project. Next, once that's in, you'll see a cross-platform input folder in Standard Assets. Dig down into the scripts and look for the joystick script. This script is going to need to reference what we're writing in a moment. So just grab that and bring it up into the top level assets folder and this will prevent any errors happening a little bit later. The first thing that we we'll need is a drive script on our vehicle. So create C sharp and let's call it drive and add this code. Now if you've watched any of my other tutorials on moving things around using the arrow keys or the WASD then you'll find this very familiar. So it's the same code that you'll find in the Unity scripting reference for the get axis method. And what we're doing is determining the translation and rotation that we should add to our object based on the vertical and horizontal axes in our game. And that is basically the arrow keys or the WASD keys. Now in this case, the only change that's been made to what we originally use is this cross-platform input manager. So instead of that, you'll have seen before input.getAxis used. And if you put this back to input.getAxis, you'll be able to drive the car around using the arrow keys. But we don't want to do that. We want to use the cross-platform input manager, which is going to allow us to drive the car using that uh, mobile controller. All right, so save that and let's just go back into Unity. Attach that script to your car. And at this point, if we add in one of those mobile thumbsticks, so go into the prefabs for the cross-platform input and look for the mobile single stick control, drag and drop that into the hierarchy. Now you might not see that in your scene. If we go to the game window, you'll be able to see there it is down there. If you can't see this, there could be two reasons. First of all, I'm in an Android build here because I'm going to build out the client part to my uh, Samsung phone. Or you could have this set to iOS as well if you'd like to do that instead. And the other thing is when you add the cross-platform input, at the top you'll get this mobile input menu. It might be currently disabled. So it's enabled for me at the moment, which allows me to see this. So you might need to enable that as well. At this point, if we press play, we should be able to drive the car around using this controller, which you can use with the mouse. So you don't have to build this out to test it, which is a nice thing because we all know that's a long process. But we're not going to use this controller in this scene because remember, this is our game car scene and we want the controller to only appear on our mobile device. So we'll stop playing and we'll just get rid of that mobile thumbstick controller. I just wanted to show you how it works. Back in Assets, we're going to write some script for the game. What we're doing is creating a networked game where the game scene itself with the car will be the server and your mobile device with the joystick will be a client. So we will need two scenes set up in this project. I've already got those two scenes and we'll get around to creating them. This scene that I'm in is called game. So you might want to save that now as your game scene. Let's create some code to set up the server for the game view. So go to create C sharp script and we're going to call this network server UE because it's going to show you the current state of the server and we'll open that up 
and add some code. So this code is quite simple. Uh, there's not a lot of it. There's actually more libraries at the top that you need to reference than code that's doing any work here. Uh, so the unit system is doing all of the grunt work for us and we're just calling essentially just one method. So uh, in this list up here at the top, you're going to need to include the networking libraries as well as the cross-platform input. So don't forget to include those. And then we've got in the class an on GUI. This is the legacy GUI system, graphical user interface, that was developed initially with Unity. And it's really nice if you know how to use it to put some information up on the screen really quickly. So that's why I'm using it here rather than uh, create fancy looking buttons and things because they're not needed. But we do need to know what the IP address is of the game itself. So the game's going to be running on your computer and it will be a server and the mobile device will be connected to the same network but in order for it to connect to the server, it needs to know what that IP address is. And it's not going to be the 127.0.0.1 local host IP that we've used in the past for connecting on the same machine because now we've got two complete different devices. And uh, the IP address you can find under network.player.ip address. And I'm just printing that out on the screen here in a GUI box that you can see. And underneath that, I'm also printing out the status of the server. So network server.active, which will tell us if the server's up and running or not with a true or false. And then underneath that, I'm also printing out how many clients are connected. So network server.connections.count will give us how many clients. So we want to see when our mobile device has connected. Now underneath that, we've got our start function, which is doing pretty much all the work. The only code we need to start our server is this here. So network server dot listen, and we need to give it the port number that we're going to be listening on. So in this case, it's 25,000. Remember that because you'll need to put that into the client when it's trying to connect. Okay, so that's all you need. Let's save this. We'll go back to Unity. What I'm going to do in here is create an empty and we'll call that our network manager. And to that network manager, we'll drag and drop our network server UE code like that. So we're not using the built-in network manager component that you can add on to things for networking. This is just a really simple one we've created ourselves. So when we press play, it's going to start listening on that port. And down in this bottom corner, you can see it's displaying the IP address of my machine within my local network and the status of the server, which says true, and that there's zero connections at the moment. So this IP address here is the one the client will need to connect to this uh, machine and this version of the game. Next, we're going to create a new scene. So save your current scene, and I've called mine game. Create a new scene, file, new scene. And once you've got that, um, I've already got one, I'll open mine up. We will call that controller or something else. Now, in this scene, you'll need to drag and drop your mobile single stick control, which was the one that was in the prefabs of the cross-platform input, this mobile single stick control here. Now, when you drop down that, you'll see a jump underneath because you'll get the thumbstick controller and you also get a jump controller on the other side, which you can see here in the prefab. I've deleted mine because I'm not using it. The other thing I've also done, if you go into your scene and 2D view, and let's just double click to bring that controller up, I've resized mine, so I've made it bigger, and I've also moved it across in the middle of the screen a little bit more. Now, it's really important, if you want this to operate correctly, that you do not touch any of the pivot points or anchors. Leave them as they are, otherwise you'll get issues when you start to drag this controller around on the screen. 
So with that added, we're now going to create a network manager, which is another empty object. I've already created one in this scene before. Uh, so it won't have anything attached to it. And it's going to have our code that's controlling our client. So let's go back to the top level of assets. And in here, we will create a new C sharp file called network client UE. And let's open that. And to it, we add this code. So at the top, we have our extra networking libraries. We don't need cross-platform input in this particular script. The first thing we've got inside of the class itself is a network client client. We need that in order to create the connection to our server. Next, we've got another on GUI just to print out some status for ourselves. Once you've got your system all set up, you could just comment out these on GUI functions because uh, like I said, they're just for debugging purposes that we can see what's on the screen. And we've got a uh, network IP address set up. We're going to print out the IP address. We don't actually need the client's IP address. Uh, it might be useful, but I've just got it there anyway. And then the status that we're printing out is, is the client connected? Uh, so we can tell whether it's found it or not. Now underneath that, I've added a little bit of code saying, if the client isn't connected, then put a connect button on the screen up in the top left hand corner. This will allow you to connect. You can try and connect in the start function of this. The only problem is if your mobile starts up before the game window starts up, it's not going to connect and find the connection. And then you don't have another opportunity. In this case, I've programmed this connect button to um, pop up every time it loses connection to the server in case you're turning that off and on to test other things. So this will help us connect. And then down a bit further, we've got our start function, which creates an instance of our client, network client here. Then the connect function that's here, which is being called from the GUI button, is using the client.connect method with the IP address of where the game is running and then the port number. So this was the 25,000 that was put back in the listen method in the network server UI code. All right, so with that now added, I'll save it, switch back into Unity, and then you wanna drag and drop that code onto the network manager so that it's just there. And now we're ready to build this out to the mobile device. So as I said before, I've got this switched over to Android build mode, and it's the controller scene that you want to build across. So let's just go file, build settings, and I'll bring that over here. Okay, now I want to build only the controller scene to my mobile device. Now I've got set to Android here. Before you build, you'll have to make sure that you've gone through the process of setting up your SDKs and that for Android, um, or if it's iOS that you've done similar for that. But the important thing that always uh, skips me up and I forget to do is put in the bundle ID. So you'll wanna go over into the settings, in the inspector, find the other settings, and look down the list for the uh, package name here which will be where you're putting your bundle ID. Make sure that you have populated that with com dot something dot something uh, because even though you're not putting it in Google Play or in the uh, Apple Store, it still needs to have a bundle ID in order to build out. Once you've done that, you can then go um, build and run to build it onto your device. Once you've got the client running on your mobile device, you'll want to switch back into the game because you can run it from within the editor to see it working. So back in the game environment, if I find the car, go back to 2D and press play, I'll then be ready to press connect on my mobile device. As soon as I hit connect, the connected on the server says connected an account of two. So it's not entirely accurate that value that you're getting 
back, even though only one thing has been connected. Now, the reason that is is because this network server dot connections array here, which contains all of the connections, has a null in the first value. So connection zero is null, and the client that just connected went into connections one. This array also, as different clients connect and disconnect, it leaves a null in the array itself. So um, you, it will never give you an entire accurate count of what's going on. In this instance, if we've got two, we know that one thing has been connected. And you'd have to loop through this um, array or list here in order to count anything that's not null to get an accurate count. But for now, we're just after something to say that we do have it connected and therefore two, as I said, is that our um, controller is now connected. Now we haven't yet programmed in the movement from the joystick to get it to come via the network to control this car and we'll do that in part two. Help support the Holistic 3D YouTube channel by subscribing and if you're interested in learning more about Unity networking there's a coupon code just for you in the text below.